Pat, how would you evaluate your guys' defense tonight? Uh, inconsistent. You know, if you look at Taylor, two halves. You know, uh, I don't remember exactly what they had over, you know, 70 at the half. And then you look at the second half, they scored 47 points in the second half. Simons, we held to five. I just told the guys, what, what was the big adjustment, right? There, there wasn't one. We put more into it. We competed harder, more energy, more talk, more effort. Um, and obviously, uh, give credit to them. They came out. Simons, we talked about all morning how well he'd been playing for them. And he got in a rhythm, got comfortable. And um, again, just things that we don't do defensively, honestly, just uh, too many wasted possessions for us. And they made us pay for them. Um, what did you see from the turnover sometimes when the offense has been kind of fluid as it has? Wes has always said, you know, I'm okay with some of those, but not with the sloppy ones that come across for no reason. Yeah, I'm from the old school, uh, you know, Pat Riley. I like to, in terms of, you know, watching the film is what he say. You don't really know. I think from the game, the feeling I got and talking amongst the staff was uh, too many random possessions, one, and then two, just too many guys trying to do it themselves and just the simple play just being willing to getting off of it, uh, the basketball and hoping that it would either come back to you or we'll just, you know, take advantage from there, um, you know, sort of thing. So, you know, 20 turnovers against anybody, uh, it's going to be hard to win. Just give too many possessions away. Um, and I know early in the season was kind of a kryptonite for us, and uh, we were back at it again tonight, uh, unfortunately. But that's something we'll watch, we'll learn from, and uh, hopefully be better on Monday. What do you mean by random uh, just more so off of makes. We have specific things that we get into uh, and certain spacing we want to get to. Um, and I thought I felt like there was just too many times bringing the ball up with different guys and or our spacing wasn't correct. Um, and it put us in a bind. And then, you know, the shot clock would be running down and guys were left to either try to do it one-on-one -on -one and we never really moved their defense enough to the second, third action, um, you know, sort of things to get the shots that we want. Um, so I, think I thought that kind of caught up with us. Pat, from your perspective, how does this how does this team repeat the same effort and intensity on defense that it showed in the second half tonight, game in, game out? Uh, I honestly, I think it just starts with a, a full commitment. To be honest with you, Josh, uh, it's in every possession league. It all matters. You know, we've seen it throughout this year in the last couple of years. Twenty point leads early in the game. These are the best players in the world for uh, a lot of reasons. Um, you know, sort of thing and. You know, I, I, tying the first half into the second half tonight, I think that was the biggest thing, right? Um, we saw it uh, a couple of games ago, a uh, home game here. I don't remember exactly who it was, but our energy changed, our commitment changed, our disposition changed. Um, and sometimes it could be one or two guys that can change it. You know, with Spencer here against Shea Gilgis, uh, you know, in OKC just the other night, um, you know, sort of thing, and kind of changed the whole momentum. And, and we needed that. We need more of that from the start as a collective group um, to help us be more consistent uh, on the defensive end. And is there anything that the coaches can do to coax that out of the players where the consistency is there, the, the, ener the defensive energy is there, basically the defense, to get the defense back to where it was in the first 13 games? You know, I just got an opportunity to coach my first game. If there is, and there's a magic, uh, something wand or something we can, you know, throw out there and, and it would change like that. Um, but I just think it comes from the everyday habits, the, the film, the communication, whether it's in a walkthrough, it's in a drill, it's in a practice, walkthrough in a ballroom on the road, uh, it all matters. Uh, it's got to matter to us, whether you're in it, you're on the sideline, uh, it's got to mean something to you in that moment. And then it's got to be carried over and be able to execute, uh, you know, night in and night out. And uh, until we get that type of thing, we'll have, you know, performances like this and inconsistent effort. It's going to be hard to win consistently. How is the coaching staff viewing, uh, kind of piecing together rotations and lineups right now with so many players, uh, so many options, and also, of course, Rui and Thomas back? Yeah, honestly, we're the, we're, we're a no excuse organization and no excuse, you know, staff. It's uh, not ideal as we're trying to get some guys, as you mentioned, back uh, from injuries, find them find them minutes, find them a rhythm, you know, sort of thing. Um, and uh, kudos to Aaron Holiday, you know, staying ready. Uh, I talked to him this morning. He's been all, you know, he's been out for whatever the last three or four games, not in the rotation, but he's been putting countless time in uh, before practice, after practice. He was at the facility last night working um, sort of thing. And that's part of being a pro, you know, sort of thing. So as we, that's on us in terms of figure out the rotation sort of thing. And I was just looking for a jolt, you know, to kind of change the game a little bit. And, you know, he provided it. And unfortunately, um, you know, it's probably a little, little too late, but I, I love what he brought to the table. And uh, again, we'll, stuff we'll continue to evaluate and evolve and uh, figure out what groups gives us the best chance to win night in and night out.
And uh, Thomas Bryan has played in the fourth quarter, uh, both games tonight. I think the majority of his minutes came in the fourth. Was that by design, knowing like you, you kind of want him out there, so you're saving his minutes for the fourth? Honestly, so a lot of it is uh, scripted before the game and figure out how we, you know, with three centers right now, trying to get them all, all minutes and have an impact type of thing. Um, but honestly, when we get to the fourth quarter, it's more of a, a feel type of thing and, you know, out there and he hadn't been yet in the second half. And then, um, again, I, I think those guys, both him and Rui, are, are doing a lot of good things. I know that they're such competitors. They want it so quick to be right now uh, in terms of what they're uh, used to doing. And, and they'll get there. We don't we don't doubt that. Um, but it just kind of worked out that way tonight for TB. How much of a handful was uh, Nurk today as well as Moore and Screen? Yeah, you know, it's funny. We, we talked about Nurk this morning and just in terms of his physicality and his presence and you know, um, he sets those screens, uh, legal or not, no excuses. We got to find a way. And also I thought, you know, his, you know, his passing ability, I know he only had two assists, but I felt like he created a lot more, whether it was the hockey type of assist or top of plays. And then just his physicality overall on offense, you know, the post-ups, they shot 35 free throws. It was a point of emphasis this morning with this team, understanding how physical they are, that they attacked the rim. He was a huge part of it, obviously getting 10 of them. You know, you know, they were in the bonus, you know, a lot of the time and it put a lot of pressure on our defense. We got to be more disciplined uh, to uh, be physical, but with technique and uh, be willing to keep guys off the free throw line. But he always had a huge impact on the game. Neil. Hey, Coach, how would you assess Denny's confidence within a game versus, say, game to game? And how do you try and just keep that a little bit more consistent for him? Yeah, I think Denny's honestly, I think he's a really confident player. Um, you know, so he puts a ton of work in. Uh, he has a full support of our staff and the organization, um, you know, sort of thing. He asks a lot of questions. He wants to know how, when, why, which is part of his growth. Um, and sometimes I just tell him that there's just nights that it's not something you did wrong. It's just, you know, we're trying to find a group or something to kind of get us over the top. But Denny's going to be a, a good player in this league for a long time. We know that, um, you know, sort of thing. And, um, I know he's going through a little bit right now. He wants to stop everybody on every possession because um, he cares about winning um, sort of thing. So uh, he'll help us. Uh, we know that. And uh, he'll be in the mix. And uh, we look forward to you know, responding uh, as a group collectively on Monday. Generally, what do, what do you think made the difference for them tonight? Oh, man. Um, I mean, we had a bunch of turnovers uh, leading with me. Um, you know, I think that was it one of the keys I felt like they were giving us the game. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we just didn't convert on, uh, on some key plays. Um, uh, defensively, you know, we weren't that good either. So, you know, it, it was a bunch of different things for sure. What do you think allowed uh, Simons to get off the way he did in the first half particularly? Uh, I mean, the way we, um, you know, the way the way we schemed, you know, um, you know, he came came down, got really, really hot. You know, we were in a deep drop. Um, you know, we, we put an emphasis on, you know, guards. We got to, you know, kind of get through screens and, um, you know, contest late. But I mean, it's tough sometimes with Nurkic. You know, he's a big body getting over and he's a really great screener, especially in the league. So, um, you know, we made the adjustment in, in the second half, you know, which you see what he had in the second half. It worked. But um, you know, we definitely beat ourselves. So, what was the major adjustment in the in the second half? Well, I mean, the adjustment was to um, just get up and impact the ball. You know, so he didn't just come off free reign and just shoot the ball every time like he did in the first half. And um, you know, it, it it did work. You know, sometimes I mean, first possession of the second half. You know, we knew we were doing it. We we let Nurk just get a dunk. You know. Just those little key things that we got to, you know, continue to key in on, you know, especially defensively, um, just to give ourselves a chance. You know, if we're not making shots, turning the ball over, I mean, we got to play, we got to do something defensively, but uh, we didn't do that tonight. So, so, I'm not, oh, so many teams have, have dealt with this, just temporarily losing a coach due to protocols. How different did this just feel without Wes here? I mean, not much. I mean, obviously, um, you know, Wes is, you know, he is a good command of us. Um, but, you know, we know what we had to do today. And, you know, we went out there, didn't execute some things. 
on both sides of the ball. And, um, you know, we paid for it. So. Who's kind of without asking too many details, but when you guys are missing Brad and you have to make a, a halftime adjustment, what's the locker room communication like? Are there multiple voices kind of speaking up? Is it, you know, you've said Trez is kind of one of the louder voices in the group. What's that like? No, uh, I mean, you know, every, everybody's putting in, you know, their, their hand in the middle, but, um, you know, the coaches come in, you know, we talk about what type of adjustments we want to do, what, what we want to make. And, um, you know, after that, it's really up to us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you, you can do all the talking you want. Um, coaches can do all the talking they want, but I mean, it's five guys on the court at one time and those five guys got to figure out, you know, and then the subs come in. So um, it's something we just, we just didn't do today. So seeing you guys be able to make that adjustment, play defense like that in the third quarter, how does that make you, I guess, like feel about the team? Is it good to see like, okay, we can do that? Or is it even more frustrating saying like, why aren't we doing this from the beginning? Um, I mean, a little bit of both. It's just tough that, you know, we just can't be consistent. Um, you know, we can do it for a quarter, we can do it for a half. But, you know, we, we haven't necessarily done it for 48 minutes. Um, you know, that's, that's just the frustrating part. And um, that's not all of us, you know, it's, it's not a singular person. It's not, you know, a game plan or whatever, you know, it's just something that, you know, we just have dealt with all year, you know, our record shows, you know, we're just, you know, 500, a little bit over 500, you know what I'm saying? It's a back and forth. So, um, you know, a lot of it is consistency. That's our issue. So. Kyle, I think this was your 17th double-double this season, and I think that ties your season high already, like halfway into the season. And I know it didn't come in a win, but what does this mean to you? Nah, it don't mean shit, really, honestly. Um, I mean, I got more opportunity. I mean, that's, that's all it really boils down to, really, you know, play more minutes, I'm out there more. I mean, I guess I get it more like that. Um, No, I, I played a game to win, so. Is you guys uh, search for consistency? Um, you got a pretty difficult stretch coming up. I mean, you guys are going to stay at home, but, you know, some good teams coming in here. Just what's going to be key in these next few games? I mean, it's going to tell a lot about what, who we are, what we're made of, you know. Uh, we had a nice stretch of winning, but we played some bad teams. So, um, you know, I think the biggest thing for us is to, you know, figure out what we are going to do. You know, are we going to play together offensively, defensively? Um, are we going to take pride in one-on-one -on -one, uh, defense? Um, you know, are we going to take pride to take care of the ball? You know, those things, you know, there, there, there are a lot of questions. But at the same time, um, you know, it's going to be a great test for us. You know, it's kind of fight or flight, you know. 500, tough stretch. You know, what are we going to do? Neil. Hey, Kuth, how much of the lack of defensive intensity slash effort early in the game do you think was a byproduct of maybe just looking at the other team and seeing who they had available and didn't have available? Um, I don't really know. Um, I don't really know how much because, you know, this has been a common theme for us all year. Um, you know, we could play a great team and come out and be sluggish or we've been good or we played a team that doesn't really have their whole team. We've been really good or vice versa. We've been sluggish. So um, I honestly can't answer that question. Um, you know, I know that, you know, we definitely, I mean, keep saying it. Um, we need to come out of games better from, and that starts with us as starters. Um, but, you know, that just goes back to what, well, you know, we've been talking about and the consistency of things. So, um, you know, just tough to, you know, put a nail over it. So what do you think made the difference for them tonight? Jeez. Um, you know, Simons came out firing. So his explosive first half, I helped him out a ton. Obviously our defense wasn't um, in the game, just in general. Uh, and then turnovers on our end. So, you know, letting them get a, get get such a great first half, and then also like our inability to convert uh, consistently just just from turnovers, right? Like even down the stretch, like we have 
you know, several different possessions when we were like down five or we had momentum or just different little things where, you know, turnover may have just killed momentum or, you know, allowed them to go up like seven and, you know, made kind of a different game. Did, did anything kind of really surprise you? Um, no, not giving away played in the last five. Um, I think, uh, you know, allowing him to get in that flow off the off the high ball screen, Nurk setting good screens and him uh, with our base and a drop for him to get those uh, open threes. I think in the first half he had like what, four or five of them. You know what I mean? Just kind of in that same action. Um, that was mostly uh, what we would have probably looked to stop if we, you know, could could run it back. Um, some of the other shots that he hit in terms of two-pointers and things, again, in the paint, like that was, that was fairly standard. Spence, how do you kind of go about building or achieving consistency? As a group? Yeah. Um, Especially when things are not consistent, like with your roster. And everything. Yeah, exactly. I, I think now that everybody's getting ready to be back, um, obviously, hopefully we get Brad back soon, right? Um, now is the best time to start to actually try to do that. I think prior to that, um, we're constantly in flux, whether it be, you know, from TV being injured, obviously Rui was out, um, and then so on and so forth, COVID and other injuries and all that stuff going on. So, you know, hopefully, number one, we can get whole, and then we can start trying to build consistency because we actually have, uh, you know, consistent, uh, players, consistent rotations, um, consistent style of play, like all that stuff, uh, you know, so we can, we can move forward in that manner. This might be a silly question, but in other sports, it's kind of like, it's hard to play, obviously, extremely hard, 110%, whatever, the entire length of the game. So some of the best teams do that in the moments when they need to, and then find the two or three moments when they're like, okay, I can get away with this one. In, in, in your opinion, do the best NBA teams, is it going hard? 48 minutes a night every single game of the season? Or do you have to find those little moments where you're like, here's where I can take a breather. Or here's how we can do this. Like, how do you, what's the balance there? Um, let me first say that in kindergarten, they said there's no such thing as a stupid question. Uh, no problem. Um, no, I mean, anything in life has its ebbs and flows. NBA is no different. Um, just keeping it a stack what you like. The most talented teams win. Like, remember like several years ago when everybody was like, Will it still be the Warriors and Cavs in the finals? And it was still the Warriors and Cavs in the finals. Well, they were the two clear-cut best teams, those like what four-year run or whatever it was. You know what I mean? Like talent is is what wins. You know what I'm saying? Like and and that connectivity and that collective and being able to bring the talent together. You know, obviously there have been many teams throughout history that, you know, were super talented but didn't work together. So, you know, it, it's it's not the 110% thing. Like more so it's it's being dialed in and focused, you know what I'm saying? And and playing to your identity more times than not, um, being to, able to impose your will on the game. But thinking that everybody's like redlining all the time, everybody would be hurt if that was the case. You know what I mean? Like, so not a stupid question at all. What's going to be key in this upcoming stretch? You guys uh, are going to stay at home, but you got some good teams coming in here. Um, I mean, team by team basis, you know, when we play, uh, Philly, you know, you got to do it in bead and that's going to take a different game plan than dealing with, you know, other other styles of a uh, team. So, you know, I can't um, forecast all of that. But in terms of just, again, going back to, to her question, trying to be consistent now that we have everybody back, trying to really establish our identity, who, who we are, how we're going to play, all those different things. Um, and then looking to impose our will and our style of play on each specific game while being cognizant to whatever the game plan is for that specific team, too. What did you think of Aaron Holiday's play today? Um, you know, was a spark for us. Definitely helped uh, get us back in the game. Um, speed of the tempo a little bit um, while they were kind of running that zone, um, and just had overall good good decision making for us. So, you know, it's it's a it's a welcome sight to see. It's it's definitely hard to be on the bench and, and then be called upon in tough moments. Um, and, and he definitely showed up tonight. So, you know, definitely hats off to him. Neil. Hey Spence, how much of the first half, you know, lack of defensive intensity do you think can be attributed to somewhat human nature looking across the way and seeing the guys that Portland was without tonight? I mean, look, I completely understand that, but we don't have that luxury. You know, we're, we're still a team trying to trying to find ourselves, obviously, as we talked about with different lives, people being out, COVID, injuries, whatever. Um, so we, we need to approach every game and, and be serious. And, and like we said, we, we knew with the last five, like Simons had been doing his thing. So that wasn't a, 
you know, new. And then also uh, with, with Nurkic, um, he's been a good player in this league for a long time. So, you know, he still had two pretty heavy hitters uh, coming out to play against us. When you talk about, again, you know, you guys don't have that luxury. You guys have said that before. What do you think it takes to try and, as a team, get out of that mentality and always be on the pedal? Um, I don't even necessarily say that, you know, we're consistent in that mentality. I think it's just something that we got to continue to reiterate. I mean, at the end of the day, we did just have a three-game win streak, so it's not like the sky has fallen. But you would have definitely liked to get this one prior to hitting a team like Philly, you know, with a guy like Embiid. So, you know, you, you, you always have to be accountable and acknowledge your shortcomings. But you also can't, you know, get too high or too low or, or act like because you lost to a Portland team that, you know, plays hard every night that, uh, you know, sky is falling. So it, it's a little bit of both, man. But um, we, we definitely understand the task that's in front of us.